Morning guys, Mark Farash with ProTech Dog Training in Rocky, and I'll do the old faceless again because I have nobody to film me. But my points hopefully are, are well taken, you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, I just don't have enough of uh, a crew to be able to put into the production side of things, which I wish I did. I have a, a pretty nice camera and a mic and everything else I can mic up, but that all takes time. I'm trying to do this on the, on the fly. So we've talked about the bulls, all right? We're talking, showing you with the puppy. I'll show it with Rocky because he's a lot more advanced. So I usually do things in patterns of twos and threes. So one of the things I do with this is I like to get the dog to a point where he understands when I go, yep, and go send him to the other bull. See how he goes to the other bull? Yep. Good, and right away he goes to the other bowl. And that's the hand signals. You can't see me, but I'm actually pushing with my hand one way or the other. So I get a right and a left that way that I can start for later on and other things. So a lot of times when you're working with stuff like this with this back end awareness, realize that these little pieces of the puzzle can be put other places. So I can direct, if I can get the dog to go from one bowl, yep, to the other bowl, with a hand signal out in front, I can get the dog to do that from a distance and get him to do all kinds of other things and grow into other stuff. If I have this back end awareness, and this is done by hand signal. You see him spinning around. He's doing it because I've got my right hand going out and I'm actually spinning and he sees that and he knows that's his hand signal to spin. So I can do things that I can do all kinds of things once I develop the dog into doing this. Now I'll get him to go the other way. Rocky, Rocky. Good. Now that's the opposite way and then this way. So we got a right and a left. And he does that off of hand signals, believe it or not, out in front. And then I can get him to go from one to the other. Rocky. Just with a hand, so yep, good boy, good. And that starts with a the voice. There's all kinds of little steps that we do to get him to do it. But because we do this every day and every day and there's two bowls associated, I can start to, yep, good boy, good. And this would really actually be a good duration marker because I want him to stay on the bowl. If I say yes, you see he breaks and he comes into me. So he has a, a terminal bridge marker, which is yes, and then a good, which is duration. So. Let me go ahead and, and accent that duration marker now. <clears throat> Rocky, yep, good boy. Hup, <clears throat> couche. <clears throat> now he's on his table. He's also very used to this table. So because we use these, I call them props, but they're not really props, they're tools. We use these tools for specific things within the obedience. I showed you the box yesterday where we were doing that uh, hinge back down. And uh, that's very good for that because it gives him a, a, a place up in the front of it. You see where it's up in the front right there? That um, is not going to allow it because it's at his chest. is going to keep him having a border basically where his boundaries. It basically does good boundaries. On the, on the tables, a dog has a very natural... Uh, instinct with things that have drop-offs like this. So I can use tables, park benches, um, all kinds of things that I can use. And I would go buy it. Yep. Good boy. Good. Rocky. Hup. Couché. And see that ledge when I said couché, right away he's going to naturally drop at the edge. And I can accent that. So it's easier to teach the dog to down on the walk or to down on the movement when I go across the table. That could be a, a picnic table at the park. I could go long ways, get him to jump it just like I did on this table and get him to drop on the edge of that. And that would start to accent to him that I want him to stop at that certain spot. We'll also use PVC pipes. We'll do all, or even a hose in the ground. A stick could be used. Anything that can kind of give him a border, okay, that he can feel. They can feel like, let's say I had sidewalk and all of a sudden there was grass. They can get very uh, adept at understanding the difference from that. We also have place markers that those bowls will turn into spots on the ground that we can tell the dog to go to. And, uh, um, and have him actually do that. We use that a lot for our movie dogs. Uh, I've got the girlfriend's been doing movie dogs for like 30 years. I've been out to a couple sets with her last year. We did the NCIS. Um, we did, um, I did a, another one that was uh, called the Marriage Boot Camp. You'll see the attack scene for this season. I don't know what season they're into. I think it's 13 or 14. They usually do one uh, attack dogs on the, on the guests that are in this mansion. And we did this last year's um, last year's one. You'll see Joker in there, and you'll also see a uh, Black Shepherd that I have that's in the back that I did. The Black Shepherd didn't get a bite because they were afraid that he was going to maybe throw them down to the ground. They could knock out a tooth or get really slammed to the ground pretty well because he's a big boy and he don't play. Um, so I used Joker, and Joker's a little bit lighter for him, and they didn't have that big, bigger problem. So, um, but we can use spots. We can send them to different locations. Now, you see Rocky, he's kind of slouched on that back end. We want that nice spank, but he's slouched. Watch what happens when I do this. Rocky, correct. Nope, couche. Good. I'm trying to teach him positions here pretty quick, too. Dabu. You see that where he popped up? See, again, that border is helpful because he's going to have a tendency to want to stay there and not come off of the table. So I can actually tell him to stand up and he won't want to move forward. I don't want forward motion. Couche. Couche. 
Good. I see. Good. Yep. Good boy. And right and left. Oh, I can't do it because I got the camera in my hand. So I got to switch hands. Rocky. There you go. Good boy. Yes. Good. Now watch what happens here. This is going to look a little strange. Again, I don't have a camera person today, but he's at my side right now. Rocky. Oh, yeah. Nope. Oh, yeah. Good. And I actually had him spin to my side. So somebody was asking me a question. I'm kind of trying to address them right now. How do I get the dog to spin into that position from a distance? Okay, so it starts with these bowls. And if I take a step and I make a step and I do a real square, so I just step off and go to the square, up oh, yeah, and the dog will spin to my side. Up oh, yeah, good. So I, they call those quarter turns. I'm actually just turning one quarter turn and I'm asking the dog to fall to my side. So he starts to take that back in awareness and learn to flip to my side. Once I get that, then I start challenging the dog and I have him spinning more. You'll see me doing some of my heel exercise where I'm actually spinning all the way around and I can't show it to you now. I'm going to have to wait and get somebody to film me uh, next week. The girlfriend's got a Schutzen trial she's going to this weekend. I'm going to a Mondio ring trial, so we've got a busy weekend this weekend. Um, we're going to be going up to, uh, it's called the Purge. They have Mondio ring if you guys don't know about it. We were just, you saw some of that ring sport stuff I was doing a couple weeks ago. Um, Mondio is an extension of the ring, standard ring sport that's a French bite sport that comes out of France and then they do one that's a lot of fun and a lot of uh, another advanced step up where they're actually doing a lot of fun things and they have a theme you never know what they're going to throw at you each club is different they could have water going across the stream to bite the bad guy they could be doing all kinds of creative things and it's a lot more mental pressure type of stuff but it's a lot of fun couche they usually wrap a theme around it i'll get some video on that uh, for this weekend and you'll get to see some of the theme that they put together for this they'll have costumes on and all kinds of fancy suits and a bunch of stuff so it'll, it'll be a lot of fun couche so we'll be doing that this weekend. The girlfriend's going to be at her club doing the uh, BH and some other things, trying to get titles on, on that. I should be there to support her, but I'm going to be a bad boy, and I'm going to go to the uh, ring sport trial because that's more my cup of tea, and, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. Also, Michael Ellis will be there. If you guys don't know who Michael Ellis is, he's one of the top trainers around, um, and he's going to be competing in this. And then the Nationals will be in – the Mondial Ring Nationals will be in April in San Diego, and this is kind of the lead-in to all these guys that are competing today or all getting their dogs to get the points and the the the, uh, the titles that they need to be able to go to that next nationals. Those that qualify because of their points, uh, because of their uh, competitive uh, diligence, getting out there and competing, those folks will be uh, the ones that get to go to the nationals. So um, that'll be again in San Diego. So I'll get you guys some film of that uh, ring sport. Uh, a Mondial ring that's going to be going on tomorrow. It's called The Purge. You might want to keep an eye on that page because they may uh, stream some of it live. Who knows what's going to happen. I'll be up there and I don't have as good of a internet connection so I may not be able to do it live. I'll send you guys some film that I take after the fact so you'll get to see that. And you saw all that uh, ring sport uh, post that I posted. That was um, the same location. So that's going to be a drive. I'll get up at 5.36 in the morning and head on out of here to get up there to, to enjoy myself. Rocky, uh, ah, good boy. Yes, good boy. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.